What's up everybody, NFX here with another tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to talk about layers in FL Studio. Uh, layers in FL Studio are pretty easy to use and they're very convenient when you want to stack sounds together. Uh, you can stack any kind of sounds together. You can do drums, uh, you know, any other kind of samples. You could do um, virtual instruments or FL Studio generators. Um, you can also lay out uh, stacks in a way that uh, they're not really stacked, but you can layer them in a way that each key in the layer triggers a different um, channel or even do key ranges in the layer to trigger uh, channels. And we're going to look at all those different methods in this tutorial. So the first thing I want to do is I want to show you how you would stack sounds because that's the easiest thing to do with layers. I'm going to bring the uh, step sequencer into view and you can see I have a kick, a snare, and a hat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another uh, kick drum. Now I'm not trying to make these things sound great right now. I'm just trying to demonstrate uh, the technique. So these two kicks, I'm, uh, the second kick I'm about to put in may not sound great, but uh, at least you'll understand what I'm doing. Okay, so there I have uh, another kick. I have uh, K. K is what I put on my on my samples for kick. Uh, so I have K Lex and K Betty, and uh, both of those are kicks. That's Lex. Betty is like that. So you can see they have two different flavors to them. But anyway, in the old way, if I wanted to stack these together, I would go like this. And, you know, I still do that sometimes, to be honest with you. But let's, let's see how we would do that with layers. Well, the way we would do it is we would basically add a channel. And you could do it either through the menu or right-clicking here and say Insert Layer. And uh, once we have the layer inserted, we bring up the channel settings window and we're going to need to set the children for this layer and you can see the set children button right there and the way we set the children is you bring up the layer channel settings and then you go back to the step sequencer and right here where this little uh, light is you right click on it and select all the channels you want in the layer and in this case I only want K Betty and K Lex so now that they're selected, remember I right clicked to turn them both on. If you left click, what will happen is it will turn off the other one. So I right click and then I go down here and hit set children. Now what that's done is in the layer is it set uh, all the keys that I play when the layer is active to play these two things for me. So if I hit a key here, look at both of these meters and you should see them both hitting and then of course you see the layer one hitting but you can hear that they're playing together so now what I can do is I can take those off put them up here and now when I play this pattern you can see Betty and Lex both play and are controlled by the layer And you can do that same thing for snares, like I said. You can, you can do it for pretty much anything you can throw in a channel. You can layer, layer them together. Now, in this case, this layer, it plays through the whole range of keys. It plays everything in the layer. Um, one way that I use layers um, quite often is when I'm layering uh, string sounds together and I want to get like a, a big full orchestra sound um, I might layer you know six or seven channels you know with low strings high strings you know with cellos uh, violins violas uh, you maybe throw a English horn in there or something you know basically you get this real thick uh, sound out of it um, so you know you there's a lot of potential there okay so now that I've shown you how to do um, just a simple drum sound with the with the kicks let's take a look at how to do uh, 
some instrument sounds layered together. And it's going to basically be the same thing. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to add uh, a couple of channels here. Uh, I'm going to go and I'm going to add um, an albino channel, which is one of my favorite uh, VST uh, instruments. And then I'm also going to load a discovery channel, which is another one of my favorite VST instruments. And I'm sorry that they don't fit on the screen, but uh, you know I'm going to show you the, the the important parts that you need to that you need to see. Basically, um, we can see I have you know my two channels, and if I start playing something on them, that's the albino. And that's discovery. And you can hear they have two very different sounds. But now let's say, you know, I might want to play these together. So I'm going to go ahead and add a layer channel. And I'm going to go through the same steps. Uh, I'm going to, going to select discovery and albino together. Hit set children. And now when I play this layer, you can see that both those instruments play together. Now, whether or not that sounds good is irrelevant at this point because it's up to you to find what sounds good. Um, but these channels act as normal channels in every other way. So, for example, if you don't like the sound of the, the discovery, let's say, you can bring it up and you can go to a different patch. Uh, really easy. Okay, that's uh, some other crazy patch, but now when I go back to the layer and play it, um, it's still playing with the albino and the discovery together. So, you know, and if you ever just wanted to play one of them, just put some channel data in, 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 in this channel, and only discovery will play it, or put it only in this channel and only albino, but when you want to play them both, put it in the layer, and boom, you've got it done. It's really uh, an interesting way of mixing sounds together and coming up with brand new sounds. Um, sometimes it's hit and miss, and I guess it depends on how how good you are with uh, with with your ear, how good your ear is. But you know, it's good for experimentation if you're ever stuck and you got writer's block. Um, sometimes you know you can just mess around and come up with something that'll that'll inspire you. Okay, but th now we've seen layers here, and this is just basic basic stacking of sounds and uh, I've only done two sounds but like I said you can do as many as you want um, together now there are other things you can do for example you can split a layer and the way you would do that and oh, let me explain what I mean by split a layer by split a layer what I mean is you can have for example octaves C5 and C6 let's say play one instrument and then maybe C3 and C4 octaves, starting on C3 and C4, play another instrument. And let me show you how we do that. I'm going to move this up out of the way a little bit. And uh, first we're going to go into albino. And we can see the channel settings for albino here. And I'm going to set this to play from C3 to C5. And if I hit uh, C5... And then I hit C4. You can hear C4 has got a very low tone. But if I set the root to C4, you can hear now it sounds the way C5 used to sound. Because that's now my root, my center. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, left click on C3 and left click just before C5. I'm not going to go on to C5. I'm just going to go to C5. And you can see that now this range in here has been selected. C4 is my root. And you can see here it says root note C4. My zone is C3 to B4. So that's from here to there. And now anything I play in, in that zone will play. Anything outside of that zone makes no sound at all. Okay, so I've gone C3, C4 with albino. Now I'm going to go back to Discovery, and I'm basically going to do the same thing, only this time I'm going to do it in the higher octave. So I'm going to move my C5 root note to C6, and then I'm going to set my range through C5 and C6. 
Okay, and remember, outside of the range, it doesn't play anything. So now when I go to my layer, I have a split keyboard. So if I play anything below C5 there, like you see C4, you can see up here, only Albino is firing. Okay, but if I play above that C5, you can see that only Discovery is firing. So now I can just, I can actually play two different parts simultaneously if I wanted to. Play my, uh, my albino stuff low. And my discovery stuff high on my, on my MIDI keyboard. So I can actually split my keyboard in half. And you know, I don't know when you'd want to do that. I know it's a common technique that, uh, performers use so that they can have multiple instruments uh you know in a in, in kind of a single patch where they can play one part and then play another part with another hand or maybe switch to the other instrument very quickly. You might want to do this for example to put a cello on the lower keys and a violin on the higher keys or something like that. But again, you can uh use your imagination and come up with things. Now finally what we can do with a layer is we can actually overlap some of that. So if we go back to discovery and I say, uh, and I set my low root to C4. Well, now C4, remember that was part of our albino range as well. So now what'll happen is it's overlapped. So now if I go and I show you the, uh, the layer keyboard here, if I play C3, you can hear it's only albino. If I play above C5, it's only discovery, but now in C4, it's both. They're mixed together at that point. So you can see that layers can, can be used in a lot of creative ways. Okay, now this is, all we've done now is we've done some basic, basic stacking of sounds and, and splitting of the keys. Uh, but let's talk about how you can use layers to make a drum kit. Uh, or set up your keys, uh, kind of in the, in the way you might set up samples on an MPC, where in a, on an MPC you have 16 pads, and each pad is playing a different thing. You might want to set up your keyboard to, to play a different sample on each key. Well, you can do that really easily with, um, with layers, too. And to demonstrate that, let me just delete some of these channels that I don't need for this demo, uh, just so that they aren't in the way. And once those are out of the way, okay, so now what we have, and I'm just going to delete this note data here. We weren't, really don't need that right now. So now what I have, I have two kick drums, I have a snare, and I have a hi-hat. Um, and that's, that's good enough. Let's say, for example, now I want to turn this into a drum kit. Uh, you know, the old way, if I wanted to play these, I'd have to activate the key, play it, record myself playing that one, then go and activate this one record myself playing that one, then go and activate this one. You know, I'd have to basically do at least, you know, four, if I wanted to real live record each track, I'd have to do them all uh, individually. But we, with layers, we can make that easier. So I'm going to go ahead and add a layer. And there's my layer. And now I'm going to uh, do the usual and select all the channels I want in the layer. Say Set Children. And now, if I hit a key, of course, all of them are going to fire off at the same time. So now what I'll do is I'll use this little drop-down menu here, and I'll say Split Children. Okay, and once I've done that, what it's done is it's taken the children, and it's basically split them into individual keys. So now this key, you can see it's hitting my kick drum called Betty. This key, the next key, the black key, it's hitting K Lex. The next key is my snare, and the next key is my hat. So now I can literally just play this thing live if I if I wanted to, and if I was good enough to. I I really don't normally play a whole drum part live, but uh, you know, as an example, I could uh, 
I'm going to try to play something live so you can see that I'm playing it all in one in one shot. That's about as good as I can get playing everything together. But <clears throat> but you know, you can record yourself playing things like for example, um you might record uh you have the layer active, arm the record and then uh Go into pattern mode, and I'm going to go ahead and record a hi hat pattern. <clears throat> okay, I should have put the metronome on for that. We'll see how bad I played it without the metronome. But I'm just going to go in here and do a quick uh, quantize on it because uh, I forgot to put the metronome on. Let's let's take a listen. Okay, so I'm I'm probably pretty off on a few of those notes, but I'm just going to leave it for now. Um, okay, so now let's say I'm going to go ahead and put the metronome on uh, just in case. And I'm going to play now my kick and my snare drum together because, you know, you, maybe you can get a better feel playing both of them together. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit record and we'll see what I can come up with. Okay, so now when we go in here, now you can see that I've recorded all those parts together. I'm going to do another quick quantize on it. Um, the notes down here, th those are my kicks. The notes on this note, those are my snares. And then, of course, you can see my, my hats right there. So now I have everything in one layer. So if, you, if I play this, you'll see that all these things are going to hit appropriately. Okay, so that's a quick and easy way of, of basically layering your uh, your sound. So now you can play them, you know, it, it's not laid out like an MPC in a 4x4 grid, but you can lay them out across the keyboard and basically accomplish the exact same thing. Um, and one of the benefits to using the layers, um, other than you can play it like kind of live or more live than you, you normally would, um, is that you can zip up the channels like this. And then when you're working with your song, by the way, I put Alt Z, like I'll activate the channel and then do Alt Z and that zips it up. And then you can just right click on a channel and open it up. Um, but you can basically work with it like this. So it saves a lot of screen space too. Um, and you don't lose any of the benefits of having it in a separate uh having the note data all in separate tracks because if you notice uh, I can route this to FX1, I can route Kalex to FX1, SRAT, my, my snare is on FX2, my hat's on FX3. So now everything's in one piano roll as you, as you saw but it's still going to separate channels in my mixer. So now if I hit play, you'll see that everything's going to their own mixer tracks. My kicks are going to go here, my snares are going to go here, my hats are going to go there. And I can still control everything uh, volume-wise from here, too. You know, any effects I want to put on them, compress, compression on the kicks, etc. So they're still independent. The only thing is, is I've told it to control the notes in the layer. And that makes everything uh, really, really convenient to use. Now, there may be a point where you might want to assign these keys. I'm going to delete that. You might want to assign these instruments to play on certain keys on your keyboard. And that's really easy to do as well. If we go in and look at these keys, we'll kind of understand how they were split and why, for example... Uh, Let's say this one, right? If I go bring up my layer, it's playing on C5. Okay? And my other kick's on C sharp 5. Then my snare. So you can see on these two white keys and these two black keys. But what if I wanted them all on white keys just to make it easier for me to play? 
Or what if I wanted my kicks down here on C4 and my snares up on C5 or whatever? You can do that. It's really easy. And the way you would do that is you'd bring up the channel that you want to control, like in this case, uh, the first kick, which if we look at it, we can see it's set to C5. And what isn't evident right away, because it looks like it normally looks, is that it's only on C5. So if I try to play this on any other note, you can see nothing. It won't play, but if I play C5, it plays. If we go look at K-Lex, we're going to notice, hey, look, this little orange thing changed. Let me go back. Now, watch this orange spot. It's going to change to the black key when I click on the next channel. And if you keep looking at that orange spot, when I click on the snare, it's going to go to the next one. When I click on the hi-hat, it's going to go to the next one. So basically, what the split has done is it's assigned those samples to play only on those keys. And we can assign those samples to play on any key we want. We can even stack them uh, if we wanted. For example, I want these two kicks to hit together. And right now, they're on separate keys. So what I can do is I can go to... Uh, now, and the other thing I'm going to do just to demonstrate it, I'm going to put them down to C4 instead. So I'm going to go to the first kick, and I, it's really easy. What you're going to do is you're going to do um, basically a double click on it, and that's going to set the range only to that key, and then you're going to right click on it. Okay, so it's a double click and a right click. Now, what it's done is it's set my root note to C4 and my zone to only C4. So now it's only going to play on C4. I'm going to go and repeat that same process for the next kick drum. I'm going to double click on C4 and right click on C4. Okay, so now C4 for both my kicks is set in the layer. And if I go to the layer, bring it up, and I'm going to hit C4. And if you look here, both my kicks are going to fire off. Okay. Now I'm going to go into the snare, and I'm going to set that up. My snare, now I'm going to set it to hit on, let's say, uh, C5. So I'm going to double-click and right-click, set it to the key I want. I'm going to go to the hat, and I'm going to do the same thing. But this time the hat, I'm going to put it up at C6. So I'm going to double-click. That sets the range to C6. And then I'm going to right-click. That sets my root note to C6. Okay, so now when I go into my layer... Here's C4. Nothing plays until I come up to C5. Then nothing plays until I come up to C6. Okay, so now I have another split, uh, kind of like a split keyboard, but, you know, I've got it uh, one octave apart just to demonstrate how you can assign it wherever you want. And then I could go ahead and record the exact same way as I did before and lay down my track. So uh, hopefully you've learned enough about layers to uh, feel confident to go out and try some new things. And just to wrap up what we can do, we can stack sounds very easily. Uh, we can stack uh, anything from samples to even instruments, to layer instruments to play together to come up with some uh, really uh, cool new sounds. Uh, we can make drum kits or sample kits. We can basically uh, very easily emulate uh, the way the MPC does it, where we can split it into, uh, you know, however many keys we have samples. You know, one of the things about the MPC is that you can only have the 16 samples uh, available um, at one time. I think you can do, like, bank switching with it. But what I mean is you, you only have the 16 pads. Uh, that you can hit at any given time, uh, whereas this way uh, you literally have as many keys as you have on your keyboard controller uh, to work with. So you can have, you know, a full drum kit with other percussions, congas, bongos, many hats, many kicks, many snares, whatever you want, if you wanted to go crazy with it. Uh, you could do that. And all your instruments, remember, remain independent of one another when it comes to mixing them and any of the channel settings uh, that, that you might use. So if you wanted to pitch an instrument, you can do that. Let's say you have, you know, uh, some sample chops that you want to put together. You can do that. And we get the added benefit 
of having everything, all the note data in one layer, so it also uh, keeps our workspace less cluttered than if we had, you know, four or five uh, instruments just for the drum kit, and we had to, you know, put everything uh, on its own channel. So, there you go. There's layers in a nutshell. Take it, run with it, do good things with it, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.